everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and do another installment in my Cultural Profile series, with this video taking a look at the seat of power for the Aes Sedai in one of the most interesting cities and cultures in the Westlands, Tar Valen. So before we dive into the video, let me hit on a couple quick items. I've been running a contest this past week for a copy of the Wheel of Time companion book. I'm going to extend the contest for another couple of days for those of you who haven't had a chance to enter. There will be more information on that at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Also, I wanted to take a second to thank one of my partners here on the channel, Audible.com. Audible offers subscription plans that allow you to listen to thousands of audiobooks and keep them in your collection. The Wheel of Time audiobooks are fantastic. I own all of them through my Audible subscription, and if you haven't checked those out, I cannot recommend them enough. Uh, if you don't have an Audible account, they are offering my viewers a free audiobook through a trial subscription on Audible. You don't need to pay anything, and you can cancel it at any time and keep your audiobook. All you have to do is go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nabless and get registered for the free trial and get your free book. And it greatly helps out the growth of the channel. So, as with all of the videos in my cultural examination series, we're going to break down the video into 10 sections. Those 10 sections are history, demographics, geography, economy, governmental structure and law, military forces, overall power, notable landmarks, significance to the story, and what happens after the story. Let's go ahead and throw up a spoiler rating. The video is going to carry a spoiler rating of yellow for the first eight sections, meaning I will not be spoiling any major plot points, but I will be talking generally about Tar Valen and some basic information that you won't find out until later in the series. Nothing major is going to be spoiled, but if you want absolutely nothing at all information-wise, I would hold off on watching this video. The last two sections of the video will contain major spoilers and I will throw up a new spoiler rating by then to give you plenty of warning before we jump into those sections. So let's go ahead and dive into my cultural examination of Tar Valen, home of the Aes Sedai. As the breaking of the world and the Second Age were coming to an end and the Third Age was beginning, much knowledge and all governmental structures prior to the breaking were completely gone, including all organizational structures for channelers. As the breaking of the world was ending, the world's remaining female channelers were split into 16 major groups and associations, all with different rules and governing bodies. In the year 47 after the breaking, those 16 largest groups met to join together to give the world stability and to set the structures and rules that would govern channelers throughout the world. This would lead to less war and more stability, and it was something that at that time the world very much needed. As they developed many of the traditions and rules that would later govern the Aes Sedai, they decided on a permanent base of operations. They chose the island that was created in the shadow of Dragon Mount after Luz there in Telamon, killed himself at the very beginning of the breaking. The island, sitting in the middle of the river Aranin, would serve as the base of operations for the Aes Sedai and a reminder that the dragon would come again, as Dragon Mount was very clearly dominating the skyline near the city. Construction on Tar Valen was started in the year 98 after breaking, and the Ogier stonemasons were brought in to construct the city with the help of the Aes Sedai. The Ogier's great skill in stonework was combined with the Aes Sedai's use of the One Power to strengthen the stone and to create buildings taller and stronger than would otherwise be possible. The city was completed in the year 202 after the breaking, after more than a century of continuous building. The city was completed with massive towers, sky bridges, and the shining jewel of the city was the White Tower, a massive tower that is still the tallest man-made structure in the world, and it was built to house the Aes Sedai and their initiate. During this time, the power and influence of the Aes Sedai had steadily been growing, and an Aes Sedai led the diplomacy effort that resulted in the signing of the Compact of the Ten Nations, binding all of the nations of the Westlands together for mutual defense and support. A few hundred years later, in 335 after breaking, Tarvalin was attacked by the followers of the false dragon Rael and Darkspain, as they attempted to free him after he had been captured and gentled by the Aes Sedai. The attack was almost successful, but was eventually repelled by the Tower Guard. This would not be the last time the island was attacked. During the Trollic Wars, a series of sustained conflicts between Shadowspawn and the Ten Nations in the Westlands that ran from 1000 after breaking to 1350 after breaking, Tarvalin was attacked four times. Three of those attacks were repelled at the walls, but in the fourth attack, coming in 1290 after breaking, the city was breached and the famous soldier Amarlin, Rashima Karimosa, led the defense of the city and the White Tower itself. The White Tower was again attacked in the year 943 of the Free Years by supporters of Gwera Malasan, another false dragon who had been captured by the Aes Sedai. The supporters of the false dragon took two bridges and entered the city. An army led by Ardor Hawkwing entered the city afterwards and fought against Amalasan supporters and saved the White Tower. Instead 
of being thankful for the rescue, the Omerlin at the time, Bonwin Merrigan, was furious Hawkwing entered the city without her permission, and she manipulated the other nations of the world to go to war with Hawkwing's small nation of Shandell. Rather than defeating him, though, Hawkwing managed to conquer the entirety of the Westlands with the exception of Tarvalon. At this point, relations with the White Tower and Hawkwing had cooled, and the Aes Sedai were accepted into leadership positions in his empire, and he had Aes Sedai advisors. But in 975 of the Free Years, Hawkwing turned on the Aes Sedai inexplicably, although later we learned there was a reason for this, but no spoilers here. He then besieged the city, and the siege remained in force the rest of his life but the city never fell. Bonwin was deposed for her role in the wars, and Tarvalin and the Aes Sedai were able to forge a strong partnership with the fledgling nation of Andor at this time, as it rose from the ashes of Hawkwing's empire after his death. They established a tradition that lasts to the current day, with the daughter heir going to train in the White Tower, and the first prince of the Sword of Andor studying with the warders. That alliance with Andor would last another 11 centuries till the present day. During the next thousand years, the tower maintained its level of importance in the world, although the lands it controlled around Tarvalon gradually shrunk in size, to just the small area that it now controlled. The number of Aes Sedai also gradually shrunk to its current levels of having around a thousand total at the start of the story. 20 years prior to the start of the Eye of the World, the Battle of the Shining Walls took place where the Aiel attacked and killed the Kyrianan king, Laman Damadred. The battle never actually entered the city, and it was undamaged, but it did take place outside the walls of the city, and it has major bearings on the remainder of the story. Tarvalon is the most populous city in the Westlands and is the second most populous city in the world. The city itself has between 500,000 and 700,000 inhabitants, making it also one of the most densely populated urban areas in the world. Tarvalon is more than the city, however, as the lands that Tarvalon controls extend around 100 miles around the city. There are numerous medium-sized towns around the city, including six towns that sit directly outside the city's bridges. These towns are fairly large, just not as large as the city proper. Tarvalon is truly a multicultural city, with citizens citizens from all nations residing within its boundaries. There is no one style of dress, and there are really styles from all nations. However, most people living in Tarvalon tend to follow the example of the Aes Sedai and dress modestly. The Aes Sedai are at the heart of the city, residing in the White Tower at the center. There are typically around 400 to 500 Aes Sedai in the tower at any given time, around half their number. Citizens living in the city have the highest quality of life of any city in the Westlands, with access to the wealth of the city, healing from the Aes Sedai, as well as extremely low crime rates in the city. Tarvalon is the safest and most prosperous place to live in the entirety of the Westlands. Tarvalon is located on a large island in the middle of the River Arannon. The island itself was created during the breaking of the world and is a direct result of Luz Theron Telamon's suicide and the creation of Dragon Mount, which is very near to the city. The island is about 400 miles northwest of the city of Kyrian and about 1,600 miles upriver from the city of Tyr. The island is around 8 miles long and more than 2 miles across at its widest point. To give some perspective, Manhattan Island in New York is around 13 miles long and 2 miles wide. So Tarvalon is only slightly smaller than the size of Manhattan Island. The island itself is mostly urban and developed, but quite a bit of green area for a city with its population density. There is a large and well-maintained Ogier Grove in the city, giving it a very large park area to the residents of the city. Tarvalon is known for its shining walls, the 50-foot tall walls that surround the entire city, along with 64 guard towers that are over 100 feet high. The walls are warded with the One Power to make them incredibly difficult to damage, and the stone is reinforced with the One Power as well to make it very strong. The city has large, broad lanes and roadways capable of six carriages at once on the road. The city has many high spires and towers and hundreds of inns. There are several large estates for nobles and wealthy merchants within the city as well. The city has six massive arching bridges that reach over the River Arnon, and even the shortest of those bridges is over a mile long. The city is truly a marvel of engineering and is extremely beautiful. In addition to the bridges, the city can also be accessed by the two great harbors at both ends of the city, aptly named North Harbor and South Harbor. These harbors are massive and can hold even large ships like the Seafolk Rakers. The harbors are protected by a massive linked chain that can be pulled tight at times of siege to seal off the harbor. At the center of the city, though, is what Tarvalon is most known for and is one of the great structures of the world. If you haven't checked out my video on the Seven Wonders of Ranland, make sure you check out that video after this one is over. But the White Tower easily makes a spot on that list. The White Tower is the tallest man-made building in the world, being over 600 feet tall and 300 feet wide at its base, 
It tapers up to 200 feet wide at the very top, and the roof of the tower is flat. The tower is divided into 40 or so levels above ground with numerous basements and sublevels below that. The bottom 20 floors are classrooms, lecture halls, administrative offices, and various meeting rooms, as well as being the location of the hall of the tower. The upper 20 levels contain the living quarters for the seven Ajas. There are two wings to the tower as well that extend out another 300 feet or so on each side of the tower. One of these wings is the living quarters for the accepted, and the other is the living quarters for the novices. Also connected to the White Tower is the Great Tower Library. It is a palatial building that has the greatest accumulation of knowledge in the entire world, and is attended by Brown Aja librarians. There is also a building that houses the quarters and practice yard for the warders, and enormous stables to take care of the tower's many horses. The land surrounding the city is a flat river plain, making it a fairly flat and uneventful view other than the massive man-made volcano of Dragon Mount that sits some 30 miles from the city. The mountain itself is said to be well past 20,000 feet tall, possibly quite a bit taller than that, and the shadow reaches the city as the day comes to a close. It is the tallest mountain in the entire world. There are no other mountains near the city, but there are rolling foothills as you move further from the city towards some of the outlying towns. Tarvalin is one of the richest nations on the planet, and despite only being a city-state, its economy is likely stronger than that of some entire nations. The city has a very favorable position on the River Arnon, controlling trade from the borderlands and the northern countries, down to the southern countries like Tyr, Andor, Kyrian, Ilian. All types of goods and services flow through Tarvalin. Tarvalin is also a banking capital for the Westlands, with most of the major banking houses being positioned in Tarvalin. There are numerous trade guilds present within the city, propped up by its truly international com community. The White Tower has been influential and wealthy over the past 3,000 years, and has vast sums of money stored away in its holding, very similar to how the Catholic Church may be viewed today. Despite the White Tower not having the influence that it used to, it is still massively influential and extremely wealthy. Borderland nations still give yearly tributes to the White Tower as well, further adding to their coffers. Tarvalin is ruled by the Amarlin Seed, a woman who not only rules over the city and its surroundings, but also over all of the Aes Sedai. She has almost absolute power over the city and its inhabitants, but in reality, the Amarlin is typically busy with more international affairs. The city itself is governed by a city council under the authority of the Aes Sedai. There are a number of Aes Sedai sisters that head this council and are appointed by the Hall of the Tower, and report to both the Hall and the Amarlin and her keeper. This council has members from various merchant groups, bankers, the Tower guard, and other nobles that live in the city. In regards to the law, Tarvalin is the safest city in the world. The streets are patrolled by the Tower Guard, who act as a police force for the city, and due to the city also being full of Aes Sedai, crime is extremely low. The law is fair and enforced well, further discouraging criminals. Also, due to the extreme wealth of the city, there is very little incentive to commit crime as well. In regards to the White Tower, the Aes Sedai are ruled, as previously stated, by the Amarlin Seat, an elected Aes Sedai who serves for life in the position as an absolute ruler over the Aes Sedai. She is joined by her Keeper of Chronicles, a position that carries the second highest position of power among the Aes Sedai, and the Keeper manages many of the Amarlin's affairs. The Hall of the Tower serves as a check on the Amarlin's power, giving some ability to countermand her decisions, and the ability to remove her if she becomes a threat to the tower itself. The Hall is constructed of sitters from each Aja, and represent the Aja's interest in the Hall. There are three sitters per Aja. Sitters have a a high degree of authority, only superseded by the heads of each Aja, which may or may not be sitters themselves, and the Amarlin. There is also a position within the tower called the Mistress of Novices, which oversees the training of new Aes Sedai, and the Mistress of Novices has authority over both the training, discipline of accepted and novices. The main military force for Tarvalin is the Tower Guard. It is a force that typically stands around 12,000 strong in times of war, and much smaller in times of peace. A larger force could likely be raised if necessary, but the primary role for the Tower Guard is to police the city and protect the walls in times of need for the tower. They are not an expeditionary force, and they are not meant to project power. However, they are trained in multiple fighting disciplines that are considered an elite fighting group. The guards are trained in, as crossbowmen, foot soldiers, and cavalry. They patrol the city and the outlying villages regularly keeping the peace and enforcing the will of the Aes Sedai. The Aes Sedai are also supported by their warders, fighting men who have been bonded by the Aes Sedai to be given greater endurance, healing, and some abilities to fight the forces of the Shadow. The warders are highly trained in combat or, and are among the most deadly fighters in all of the Westlands. 
Tarvalin's overall power does not stem from its military might or the goods that it produces, but rather from its influence. It is the most influential nation in the Westlands despite its very small size and not controlling large areas of land. The Aes Sedai have influence in all parts of the world and control the politics, economics, and even international alliances. The Amarlin seat is the most powerful ruler in the world and could summon any monarch, including the Lord Captain Commander of the Children of Light, and they would come. This influence, combined with the economic power and the trade control that the city possesses, make it potentially the most powerful nation in the Westlands, despite not having the manpower to openly conquer territory. The most notable landmarks in Tarvalin and the surrounding areas are places that we've already hit on, most notably the White Tower itself, the Ogier Grove, and Dragon Mount itself. The reality is, is that the entire city is, is a notable landmark and is universally considered one of the most beautiful cities in the entire world, even with the most plain of buildings looking like palaces. The city really awes visitors, and the sheer scale of it as well makes the city a landmark. So that is going to end the yellow spoiler section part of the video. The next two sections are going to carry a spoiler rating of red, meaning there will be major spoilers all the way through the final book in the series. If you have not completed the books, please watch at your own risk. You have been warned. So Tarvalin plays a major role in the story, and a significant chunk of the books are spent within the walls. The White Tower and the Aes Sedai themselves are essentially the center of every major plot line, and Randall Thor himself was born on the slopes of Dragon Mountain near the city. From the beginnings of the hunt for the Dragon Reborn by Moraine and Swan, to the breaking of a part of the tower, to its reunification, and all of the politicking and struggles between them, the White Tower and its inhabitants are at the center of almost all of the plot lines. Because the White Tower plays such a significant role in the world, it's safe to say that really Tarvalin is one of the most influential places and locations that we see throughout the entire book. So what do I think will happen after the completion of the novels? Well, the Aes Sedai are very depleted by the end of the books. A good amount of their number have been killed during the last battle, but there are more novices currently than any time in the tower's history. Cad Swain has been elected as the new Amarlin, and I imagine she will see the wisdom in keeping many of Egwene's policies in place as she learns more and more about the things Aes Sedai have taken for granted. The role of the Aes Sedai will also be balanced now with the rise of power of the Black Tower. Cad Swain and the remaining Aes Sedai will need to learn to work with the Black Tower and rebuild the world. There will also be the looming threat of the Shan Shan. Their forces were the least depleted after the last battle, and they control a significant chunk of land. I believe that the White Tower will seek to undermine the Shan Shan control of Damani by perpetuating the truth that the Suldam can channel. I think the Dragon's Peace will become very difficult to enforce, and ultimately will lead to likely conflict with the Shan Shan, unless cooler heads can prevail. Nevertheless, I believe the White Tower's role in the world will likely change as well, as they are no longer than absolute power for channeling, as there are other societies of channeling, considering the ideal, the sea folk, the kin, that will also take a place of prominence as well. So that's it, my cultural examination of Tarvalin. What do you think? Did I get it right? Tell me what you think I might have missed in the comments below. Also, please like the video if you enjoyed it, and go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon if you'd like to be updated when I release new content. I'm also curious how all of you would feel if I did a live stream here on YouTube. I'm curious how many of you would be interested in tuning into it and participating if I went live. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you think I should do a live stream, if you guys think that would be fun, and what time of the day you think I should do it. Make sure to let me know what time zone you're in. Uh, I live in the Midwestern part of the United States, so I'm on Eastern Standard Time, if you know what that is. Um, so kind of give me perspective of what time you think I should do this. And as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to extend my contest for the Wheel of Time companion book up until this coming Sunday. So you're going to have a couple more days to get registered for the contest. How do you register, you ask? Well, it's quite simple. All you need to do is join my Discord server and post a question in the contest questions section on the Discord. If you're not sure what Discord is, it's a chat site that allows you to communicate more directly with me. I love being engaged with you all and the community, and I'd love for you to hop on and talk with us. You can find out more about how to join the Discord by checking out my Patreon page. The link is in the description below, and all you got to do is check it out there, and you'll find a link to get on my Discord. While you're there, consider supporting the channel and check out some of my Patreon-only content. Hey guys, thanks again, and until next time. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?